Hey, animal behavior students. So this week's work is um, going to be to take what we've been doing so far. First, you're going to be asked to review your assessment on ethograms and behavior causes from a couple weeks ago. We're going to hold on to the document you created last week, the timed ethogram. If you haven't done that yet, please go do that because that's going to be the focus of next week's work is going to be some data analysis. And what we're going to do is take what you should have learned up to this point about how to write about behavior causes and how to write ethograms and combine them onto one document that's going to be your second assessment of behavior causes. Okay, so if you go into the materials in the course, um, and we're in our extended flex learning folder, uh, if you go back and look at uh, week three, putting it together, behavior causes and ethograms, there was a summative assessment given on that day. Now, I'd like you to open that document. Many of you received messages from me about this. Um, and if you have questions, I'd like you to visit me during office hours. Uh, alternatively, there's going to be a sign-up sheet. It'll be the link under this week's, if you're watching this video, it's the next link, where you can sign up to visit with me during some non-office hour time. So if you'd rather visit with me earlier in the morning or in the afternoon or even in the evening time to talk about that assessment, that's fine. The main issues with that assessment, or the main, not issues, the main things I takeaways I, I, and feedback I gave as I was grading it were this. So this is the rubric. Um, and what I found is that uh, some people are still struggling with ethograms. If that was the case, I wrote you a comment and I just said, hey, I need you to come visit me so we can talk about ethograms. I think there's a kind of a core misunderstanding in some of you about exactly what an ethogram is supposed to look like. But for many of you, your ethograms are great, right? And you didn't need to do anything. You got full credit on your ethograms. You fully demonstrated the ability to do that. The struggle came in the last two parts of the assessment where I was assessing your ability to ask and answer questions about behavior causes. So animal behaviorists have these four questions we can ask. So far in this class, we've only really addressed one. And part of that is if we had been in class, we would be doing all four and working with more live animals. But with this distance learning format, we've really only focused on one so far. We're going to do a second one, but one of them, which is what is the cause of behavior? And I asked you guys, there was, we watched this video on snakes, and I asked you to ask the question about the cause of snake striking behavior. And I said, just write the question and then predict an answer. And that was these last two parts. And a lot of you just wrote a general question, like, um, what is it that the snake is scared of when it looks at the squirrel's tail, right? Which is not a question about behavior causes. It might be something you're wondering about, but I think a lot of you kind of missed the point of this part of the assessment. And that's possible because, I mean, that may be just because of the way the course has been run so far, but let me show you how to find that information if you're not sure how to ask about causes. So if you go back to unit two, right, there were some notes a notes practice document that were that was assigned in week two. And um, that document was, this is the document. So find this in your notes. You made a copy of this and did this work already, right? Um, or you can go back to your submission and open it there. It's also in your Google Drive. This tells you exactly how to complete work about behavior causes. So it tells you how to write the question. What is the cause of? And then you insert the category name from your ethogram and then finish it with the word behavior. That's all I needed for you to get full credit. You just needed to write, what is the cause of? Name the behavior, right? Then I needed you to think about what an answer would look like. So if you've asked the question, like, what's the cause of snake strike behavior? Your answer is going to tell me what came before the snake strike that made the snake strike. So in this a, um, notes activity, you were asked to do the same thing about seagulls. And when you got down here and you did this work, a lot of you still weren't using the question format correctly, right? But I asked you to name the category, so maybe you call it begging behavior. The question would have been, what is the cause of begging behavior, right? 
if you watch this video about the baby seagull pecking at its parent's beak. The predicted answer then is your prediction about what came before the baby seagull begged that set off begging, right? So here in the notes, I tell it shows you directly how to make a prediction. You have to predict and write about an internal cause and an external cause. All behaviors have both. So for this baby seagull, what do you think it was feeling inside when it started begging? Well, you can guess based on the fact that it got food that maybe inside the baby seagull was feeling hungry, right? And if you imagine a baby seagull that is full, do you think it begs at its parent for food? Maybe not, right? Like it, it's full, it doesn't need food. Or maybe think of a lion who just ate a big meal laying on the plains, right, in Africa, and a gazelle goes walking by. Do you think that lion gets up and goes and chases that gazelle. Um, some of you might be like, I don't know, maybe, I'm, what I know about a lion. All right, put it in terms of you. Let's say you have just had a huge meal and you are stuffed, right? All you wanna do is just like lay on the couch and like veg. And you walk by the refrigerator, but you're like just like overly stuffed. You, there's no hunger in you at all. Do you stop and open the refrigerator door and start, you know, do you getting food out? Do you engage in that behavior? Most of you don't, right? Because you don't have the internal cause of the behavior. Now flip it. Let's say you're hungry or the lion's hungry. Gazelle walks by. You walk by the refrigerator. What do you do? You open the door, right? And you get some food out. So internal causes set off behaviors. There also have to be external causes. So a lion that's starving and hungry doesn't just all of a sudden start stalking like when there's nothing around. It waits till there's a gazelle there. The baby seagull doesn't do begging behavior when its parents aren't there because there's nothing to beg at. So what is the external cause? What sets off in its environment the behavior? That's how you predict an answer, okay? And a lot of you uh, were not doing that very effectively yet, okay? So that was your first assessment on that that ability to ask a question about behavior and answer it was the snake assessment. I do not need you to go back and redo it. In fact, I don't want you to go back and redo it. Instead, what I want you to do is to find your individual project. You found a video of a behavior in the first week. And I'd like you to take, and you wrote an ethogram about it. You named a category for a behavior, right? Some of you wrote down several categories. So if you're gonna do this, you're gonna to have to pick the one category you're gonna focus on. Go to your ethogram. And now I want you to write a predicted answer to that behavior. You're gonna put all that work. So it's going to be your videos, your ethogram, updated if you need to update it, and your, um, and your question and answer about the causes of that behavior are all going to go on one summarizing document. This could be a Google Doc. This could be a Google Slides as you get ready to make a presentation. So we're going to have this individual project kind of summarize all of the skills that we learned. And that is going to get submitted this week by Friday for a grade. Okay. Now, it's just a prediction. Please don't go do background research to find out the answer to your question. Um, you may not be able to find it, or you may pe find people that are just making up ideas that are no better than your own ideas. Instead, I want you to use those skills. Ask the question, and then predict an internal and an external cause. I will not be assessing you on whether you get it right or wrong. I'll be assessing you on how well you show me that you understand what internal causes are, and external causes are, okay? Not whether you pick the exact correct internal or external cause for your behavior. Please let me know if you have questions, um, and I hope everybody has a good week.